So let's talk about money, my favorite subject. Let's go. You do a lot of things. Sure. I know you, but I don't keep in touch with you every day. Mm. Just by not being in touch for a few months, yeah. I lost track of what you're doing now. Sure. As far as I know, you are a speaker. Yep. You're an author. Mm. You invest as well. I think you invested in some properties. Sure. You sold your first business yep. by age 22. Yep. So maybe can you talk about how did you start your first business? How, how did your mon money journey go? How did you build up what you have today? Oh, wow. What a journey it has been, man. You know, so um, I, I talk about this principle in my book, which is um, ILT, Invest, Learn, Teach. And that's a principle that I've used throughout my life. I built many businesses, which I start from with little capital or no capital, actually zero capital. Um, but I, so what I do, so the whole, this is how the entire principle works. Invest in yourself, invest in a mentor, you know, to learn something that you truly find passion in, right? Learn it and really, truly master it. Become really, really good at it. And eventually, use the information that you've learned to teach it to other people as well to start a business, right? So that's exactly what I did, man, you know, with regards to, uh, with regards to, you know, my fitness business as well. Uh, you know, I, I knew how to go to the gym. I knew how to train in the gym, but I really struggled with getting a ripped six-pack. So what I did was I invested with a coach, right? I was like, coach, you have the results, please show me, right? So he's like, okay, cool, work with me 16 weeks, I'll make you shredded. So I worked with him 16 weeks and he got me shredded. Did I learn things along the process? Absolutely. I just followed everything he taught me to the T, but obviously I learned this stuff. And once I got the results, people were like, hey, Rash, teach me, show me how. And I was like, sure. And then it became a business. And then I did an affiliate thing, I did a... Um, I worked together with my coach and then I referred people to him and I started a business from there. I started making money from that, right? So I invested, I learned, I got results. I taught the principles. So the exact same thing I did with regards to investing as well, right? When I started out, I knew that I'd learned from a mentor, right? So I invested in a mentor, I invested in many different programs. I learned, I became really good at it. I got a seriously good uh, portfolio returns and I started building my portfolio at a very young age and I was like, hey, I can share this stuff with you. And, you know, people came and they're like, yeah, Rash, please show me how. And then I started teaching it. And, and one thing led to another and became my entire business. That business, I built it up from zero, zero capital. I didn't invest any money in advertising, nothing at all. And I built it up, you know, to uh, impacting nearly about two, three hundred people. And then, you know, I sold that business. And then right now, I'm the director of Buffett Online School, right? Where I work directly with the Buffett family. I work with uh, Mary Buffett herself to bring Buffettology principles all around the world. And right now, I'm no longer talking to, you know, 10 people in a room. I'm talking to thousands every single month. Thousands and thousands of people can okay, travel all over the world and impact lives everywhere. Can I stop you right here? First? Sure. I've got three questions for you. Let's go. First, why invest in a coach? I, maybe I can figure it out on my own. Sure. I look at what other people is doing. Yep. Is this working out? Yeah. Right? I look at what this guy is doing. I just copy. Sure, sure, sure. Um, you know, so two things. Uh, very, very simple, right? Two, two, two simple theories I want to give you. Number one is this. Uh, you cannot become an Olympic champion by watching YouTube videos. <laughs> like, there's no Olympic champion who learned how to become so good at this crowd by watching videos and, you know, just, hey, I'll just learn online, for example. It doesn't work that way, right? That's number one. So, yeah, that should tell you something, right? And number two, number two, even the top guys, man, even the best in the world, have coaches. So why are the best in the world have coaches? Uh, the reason why is because these coaches see what they cannot see. They can see their blind spots. They can see um, what's lacking in their game. Something that they might not be able to tell. So that is what is so, so important. And of, of course, thirdly is with regards to accountability. Right? So no matter where you go in life, man, it's very, very, very important to have a coach, to have somebody to uh, point out what you can actually improve so that you can accelerate your journey to another level. So I've realized that that is the one thing that I never spent money on. I always did it. Why? Because that just accelerated my income. It just seriously accelerated my income. It accelerated my experience. It accelerated everything in my life, right? It was because I had mentors. I had people who were accountable, who helped me to certain standards. And I just got better and better. I think your background as a because you were training for Olympic yep. weightlifting, 
as an athlete, that really instill in your mind that everything you do, you, it makes you more competitive and you always want to, your new word, <clears throat> I like it, max out, always yes. want to max out everything. Yep. And uncomfortable because definitely you'll be uncomfortable. Mm. Your coach will push you, you're paying money, yep. all these things, you'll be stressed. But the uncomfortable has become your new comfortable. Absolutely, man. You're, that's the whole idea behind it. You're uncomfortable because you're new comfortable. Absolutely. When you're comfortable, do you feel... Let's say, if, let's say you don't do anything for a week. You don't make videos, don't invest, just be... Just chill for a week. Will you get depression? Uh, uh, I wouldn't say I'll get, de- I'll get depression, but I'll feel very uncomfortable, right? Like, you know, dude, I, I'm just like any other hustler out there, you know, every day my mind rings with ideas, like, I want to do this, I want to do that. So, it's difficult for me to sit down in one spot, you know, I, you know, so people always ask me, sometimes somebody actually asked me the other time, um, you know, when do you plan to retire? I was like, no, nah, I mean, I never retire, right? I will keep doing what I do for the rest of my life. Right, I pray that God gives me the strength to be able to do what I'm currently doing for the rest of my life. Because, you know, uh, it's about finding what you truly love to do. And if you find out what you love to do, you'll do it until you really die. This is a very good point. Because when I was 19, I started out trying to find money, all this. Right? I had to go to retire early mm. yep. in my career. Until when I first started my business and I, as I like and, and as I progress and doing what I do now, I actually love what I do, you know. Yep. And I'm no longer in a hurry to get rich. Yeah. I'm like, just chill, man. I can do this forever. I want to do this. Forever. Even when I'm super rich, I still want to do this. Absolutely. So, so that's a big shift uh, in, the, in the thinking and everything. Okay, so that's question number one. Question number two is, back to your story of starting a business. And this is a, a, a question about values of money and everything. Sure. Why can't you teach for free? Because there's no cost, right? Is that not much cost? You can teach at your home. Yeah. Why, why do you charge money? Okay, so why do I charge money? Uh, very, very, very simple. When you, when you charge money, you attract people who are serious. When you don't charge money, you attract people who are not serious, right? Uh, seriously, I've been through uh, many different programs. Free causes, paid causes. I realized that the ones, even for me, the ones that I don't pay money for, I don't implement, I don't do, because I don't take it seriously, there's no vested interest. But the ones that I actually pay my own money for, which I take money out from my own pocket to pay for, shit, I get very, very serious about it, because I have vested interest. So I realized that is true in my life, and it's so true in everybody else as well. If you don't have vested interest, if you don't have skin in the game, you're not going to take anything seriously, man. You know, so that's one of the reasons why uh, we, I do that. Uh, and secondly, uh, very that's that's one reason, but the second reason is very very simple. Like I run a legitimate business, right? I've I have cost. I you know I there's I have to pay my staff to do all these different things. If I don't if I don't generate cash flow in my business, then my business cannot sustain and grow, right? So that's a more practical reason why we do have to charge a reasonable amount of money so that our business can grow and so that we can provide and add more value to the world. Okay, good. Sounds fair, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, because that was one of the big Maybe it's about your value with money, your value system with money, big mm. uh, obstacle to overcome. Like, I'm charging money, but I feel bad for doing it, right? You don't feel bad for doing it because you know every one dollar your client pay you, you make them more. Absolutely, man. It's all about ROI, right? So if you are paying money uh, and you get, if you're paying one dollar and you get two dollars back, and then I'll do it all day, every day. Okay. And you were saying you grew your business to 300 clients without advertising. Yeah. What was the secret? Because I grew my business with yeah. a lot of advertising. A lot of advertising. So I started my entire thing with zero advertising, man. Zero. I, I To be honest, I just wasn't a very, very savvy business person. Like I just loved what I was doing. And I, I just managed to harness the power of referrals. I'm really, really, really good at that. You know, I got, you know, I, I truly cared for my people. And my people knew that I truly cared for them. And that was how I was able to get them to keep bringing their friends and their friends. And it just all ran based on just pure referrals, man. Seriously, like every single batch it was like, which and every batch I conducted was about 15, 20 people. And three quarters of them would be uh, because of my other friends who actually brought in other clients and all that. So I'm really, really good in that. And uh, I think a lot of people don't pay attention to this, right? They pay, They spend a lot of money on advertising and stuff but they don't pay attention to hey how can i actually use my existing database to leverage on them to spread the word and how 
what 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 was the actual system that you use? Did you like every after you help someone make money, you ask them to give you referral or no? So so it was just a process of you know um, I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of uh, sessions where we come together. You know my I didn't see I didn't call them clients, man. All right, they were they were my friends. They were my family. All right, so I didn't see them as um, I didn't see them as somebody who I was transacting from or oh yeah, yeah this is my client no nah, no nah, no nah. they were they were friends their family and you know you when you have friends and family in your team then these people want to truly help you out right so that was that was my relationship with them they never saw me as like a trainer or somebody who is like above they saw me as somebody who was uh, sharing my knowledge to actually help them out and they they love this family that they belong to so they called more of their friends who they loved to join the entire family so that was the that was how I actually really built it, man. Seriously. So, um, yeah. But I said, of course, the the issue is the issue is uh, with regards to really scaling that up. You know, to really grow to uh, like you you can't just depend on that to really scale to the moon, right? So that's what I'm doing right now, right? The scaling is on another level altogether. But when I was building with zero advertising, that was what I was doing, man. And it really, really worked. You know, I didn't spend a single cent. I grew my margins were like I don't know, eighty, ninety percent, I guess. Yeah. So, for some of you out there that maybe you are thinking to start a business or what, think focusing on the client experience and giving client a good result, mm. that actually has good ROI. Mm. Not just, you know, how much money can I make, but if you really serve your client, mm. eventually, you know, money will come. But of course, there is a system and I see, yeah. like for example, your monthly gathering there, that, that may bring in some referral. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, dude, dude, just to change the word again, not clients. They're not clients. Not clients. They're not clients, right? They're family. You know, they're, they're, they're part of your community, right? So just, just uh, sometimes it's crazy how a uh, reframing of a word can change everything, right? Because when you think of them as client, then you, you think of you have to provide a service to your client kind of thing, right? But change that the word and, you know, you might see changes and maybe that is you know one of the biggest um, aha moment that i get from this which is why you were able to create like a family mm. kind of community mm. and mine is more like business professional setting yeah because i learned from a very famous marketing guru jay abraham mm. which says that you want to call your customer client instead of customer uh. this customer is just someone that you buy sell with sure but a client is someone that is under your care okay that you you have a fiduciary interest to okay. give them the best but you actually took it one step higher uh, they are your family yeah okay that that's even better yeah so you said you you are doing yeah you're with buffet online school now yeah. is that all you're doing or is there any other uh, uh, online school is the main, public speaking. Yeah, so Buffer online school is the main thing that i'm actually focused on right now you know expanding that all over the world we're bringing it um, like I told you, right, currently right now, I'm spending, you know, massively around the world, uh, Singapore, in Malaysia, in, in India, in Taiwan, in Japan, so many different countries around the world, man. So, you know, I'm very, very excited to be part of that. Uh, occupies a lot of my time, obviously. You know, I do uh, my speaking training and uh, speaking mastery as well. So that's another thing that I do. Obviously, I'm involved in a lot of investing work as well. So I go around investing in different things. Of course, building my equity portfolio, but always looking for opportunities in the real estate market to you know look for opportunities investing in actual businesses as well. So all of the stuff is currently right now on my hands. And at the same time, I do a lot of work for charity as well, uh, which is something that I feel very, very passionate about. And yeah, so yeah, that's what I do. Which is what we are going to go about next. Yes, yes, yes. Rare Disease Society. Yep. Rare Disorder. Rare Disorder Society. Rare Disorder Society. Yeah. And recently, you mm. raised about 10, 11,000 yeah, Sing 11. dollars. Yes, 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 that's right. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and mm. why, what have, what started your journey in giving? Why, why are you so generous in giving? Um, okay, so number one, um, my, the, the, the reason, okay, so I, I, I do a lot of work with uh, Rare Disorder Society Singapore. This is a society in Singapore that supports children with rare disorders, supports the children, supports the parents who bring up kids who have rare disorders. These kids have diseases that uh, nobody can help them with because nobody has it. It's so rare that, uh, you know, there's only a couple of families in Singapore which have children. You know, many of these kids have diseases, supposedly doctors tell them that they can only live a couple of years for. Maybe they can live for one year, two years because there's no cure. 
uh, but you know right now medical advancements these kids can live a lot longer but because of the because they can live longer the cost is very very high as well so you know i want to do whatever i can to actually help these children out and to actually raise awareness and funds for them so that's something which i actually do so you actually ask me why am i so generous right so i i raise a lot of money for them and like seriously uh, i've been doing it for the last you know five six years you know constantly raising i've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars my goal is to hit millions uh to raise you know for children and rare disorders around the world so why do i do it you know my mom always told me ever since i was a young boy you know you have uh, you don't give because you have you don't give because you have you have because you first give i think that's so so important a lot of people always tell me rash wow well, i want to give away so much when uh, i i start having money Oh, I want to give when I have, but it doesn't work that way, right? It doesn't work that way. You, the reason why I have today is because ever since I was in primary school, I first learned to give, and that was the principle that my mom taught me. It's, it works differently, man. You know, you don't, uh, yeah. So it just works differently. So uh, I and one more thing. I truly, truly believe. You know, I, I teach on investing. I teach on investing in the stock market, in properties, and all these different things. But I realized that the biggest returns in my life have always come as a result of me giving. You know, it just the universe, God, just works in mysterious ways, man. You know, whenever I give and whenever I sow a seed, it just comes back to me in like, like suddenly opportunities will come. I, I cannot explain it. I really, really cannot explain it. Like, like you know, I, I did this entire. I did. I gave this 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 money away, and dude, like this week, there's so many opportunities popping up. I I'm like, whoa, right? Like it's interesting. Like every time I challenge myself to give bigger, I ask God, you know, let's see what you're gonna bless me with. And within like just like that, suddenly some opportunity will come up where I make you know the money back and so many more times returns just like that. Dude, I I cannot explain it, but it just happens again and again and again. And I think it happens again and again and again because I believe it will happen. And it happens. So, <laughs> so yeah, man. So you know, just, you know this theory. I've heard it before. Yeah. And I've seen it happen, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It doesn't make sense, but it happens. Yeah, it does, man. Absolutely. No, and I truly, truly believe that is. You know, actually. So I'm a, I'm a Christian myself. You know, I I in the Bible it's actually written. You know that um, no seed that you sow, uh, every seed that you sow will come back to you in a harvest. Right, there's a seeding time and harvesting time. You know, you sow sowing time and harvesting time. So when whatever seed you sow, in its due course, in its you know, it might be, it will take some time or whatever it is, but it will come back to you. So I always believe in this one thing of this theory: never stop sowing seeds. You know, I'm not just talking about financial seeds. In terms of sowing seeds in people, sowing seeds of hope, in just telling people like I believe in you, I see so much potential in you. That is sowing a seed in somebody's life, right? And sow that seed every single day in people. Sow that seed every say every single day and watch how the harvest comes to you in multifold. Okay, when you first gave the donation, how much was it? It was quite a big amount, right? Your first, uh, dude, like that was that was a culmination of you know uh, after I think I know what you're referring to, uh, but uh, the my first big one was when I actually raised uh, and gave away about sixty thousand dollars. That was your own money, or? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So it was it was my own money, and I actually raised money as well. So it was together my money and. Uh, so I, f- f- that was for from me was nearly over thirty forty thousand dollars I think. I I want to ask something more specific. Sure. Was that money significant? You uh, significant to you no, at it that was, time? It was huge, man. It was massive. It was huge. How how let let's say if you have a uh, hundred dollar, how how many dollars would that be? That would have, no, dude. That was more than half of my bank account. <laughs> this doesn't make sense to me. Like, why would I give? More than half of my bank, uh, more than half of my wealth. That's like, I can't understand how. Why would you be? Do uh, <laughs> what, what motivated you to give more than half of your money away? Okay, let's, let me rephrase it this way. Mm. Um, why? Let's say some people will say I don't give now because I invest that money. Let mm. me compound it. Sure. Then I give away half. Sure. And sure, I'll sure. still be very comfortable. You know, you know my, you know I have this goal, right? Let me tell you this new goal of mine. My goal is this: I want to be able to make so much money that I can live on one percent of the money that I make. Does that make sense? 
It yeah. makes sense to me. I want to be able to live, I want to be able to make so much money that I can give away 99% and be able to live very comfortably, not, not like, you know, live like a pauper, but live very comfortably on just 1%. And I think it's quite clear now that you want to make a lot of money, but your goal is not to hold all the money and be known as a richest person. You want to be known, you want to be known as a richest person in terms of holistic, yeah, but not just money. Absolutely, man. And what's the point of just holding money? I, I realized uh, after a couple of years, not immediately, I realized after a couple of years that you know whatever digits get added into my bank account, it's just digits, you know? It's just digits. It's just like I get another ten thousand dollars, another hundred thousand bank account. It's just like it, okay, it's cool. It's another number, right? It's just another digit. And numbers don't end, right? That doesn't bring you fulfillment. That doesn't bring me like happiness and joy. You know, but what brings me happiness and joy is when I gather people together. When I did this push up event just two days ago, and I saw children come together. I saw adults come together. I saw old people. I saw children. I saw them coming together to you know push themselves and to uh, and their smile. That's what made me happy, man. I realize you make a lot of money, but you never because I don't see evidence of you upgrading your yeah. living of standard. I, I do. I, I go on fancy holidays and you know eat good food and. Uh, you know, I, I do live a okay, you know, decent life, but you know, I don't I don't uh, splurge on too many you know fancy things and and stuff like that. You know, but I I do have my fair share of fun. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to be known for when you die? You know, I I just want to be known as a person who uh, has created impact and a lasting um, legacy for my generations to come. Uh, you know, investing is a huge part of what I do, but you know, yeah. I love investing, don't get me wrong, but uh, I just see it as a vehicle. It's a vehicle for you to make more money so that you can make a difference in people's lives. That's what I see it as. You know, I want to be able to impact, impart knowledge to people so that they can make more income for themselves so that they can use that to truly, truly uh, make the world a better place. And that's what I want to be known for, man. That's what I do, I do. Okay. What's the next big dream or what's the next thing you're chasing that you want to achieve your next goal? So I, I, you know, currently right now in building Buffalo Online School, I want this to be a school that is known in every city and every country in the world. I want this to be a globally known platform. I want this to be a, a go-to place for proper investment education. Um, that's something that I'm actually working to build, right? So I'm thinking, asking my team to think, you know, 10x bigger to go into, you know, schools, universities, countries around the world, and let's see how we can scale this up to the next level. So that's something that I'm actually working towards. Um, you know, uh, there's something huge that I'm working towards. Uh, and, you know, most importantly, to bring a lot of people on the right, right? To not just build it for myself, but to help give opportunities to my teammates, to people who will come into my company, to my uh, fellow students, my family, uh, and all of these people so that they can actually see a better version of themselves. What is your biggest... What, what? Let's not talk about not let's not talk about what's your biggest success because there are so many success. What are you most proud of? And what's your biggest regret? Wow. <clears throat> okay. Great question. What am I most proud of? I am dude, I I am just very, very proud that I can say with confidence that every single year so far. I've got better. I've pushed my limits. I've always maxed out and I've always got better in whether it's in business or whatever it is, I always get better. And that's something that I really, really am proud of because I realized that the only person that you should be in competition with is in yourself. To yourself. And you don't want to be a I used to do this so many years ago. No, 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 no. What are you doing currently right now? Right? So that's something that I'm very, very proud of that I keep improving. And every year, I create more impact, I impact more lives, I get on bigger stages. And when people look at me, right, like you've seen, me, you've seen my growth over the years. Crazy. Every, super fast. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's what I'm most proud of, that I'm always improving myself. And you see it as a testimony if you follow me on social media and everything. So that's number one. What do I regret? Uh, if any. What do I regret, if any? Uh, great question, man. So the um, so many as in, dude, with successes come failures as well, right? But one of the things with, that I regret, uh, and it's happened again, again. That has also taught me a lesson. So that is no longer something I actually suffer uh, like suffer from. But uh, never forgetting what is truly important, and never forgetting what is truly important in terms of 
uh, your relationships with your your loved ones, your family, and everything. So you know, in the chase for business, in the chase for making more, impacting more, don't forget the people who truly, truly matter. Because at the end of the day, you know, when push comes to shove, the people who truly matter are your family, your parents, your children, and the ones who are in your house, man. So never forget them. And uh, that's something that I constantly remind myself of, you know, because my schedule involves me, you know, spending a lot of time away from away from home. But uh, I always remind myself to when I'm when I'm back, I want to be present. I want to be really here. I want to be there for my parents, and so they they can truly feel that I uh, love them and I'm not forgotten them. That chase for whatever. Top three things that contributed to your success: um, consistency. Consistency. Um, number two is number two, very 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 big one, is the willingness to help other people become better, and to become better than you, better than me, right? So that's the that's number two, right? A huge huge thing. I I have this quote. I can show you later, right? Um, which I really really love. If you help enough other people achieve their goals, their dreams, then you achieve everything that you want. If you'll help enough other people become successful, then you will become you will achieve all the success that you actually want. It's quoted by Zig Ziglar, correct? So that's number two. And uh, number three, number three is um, number three is in always, always. I feel I feel number three is always in terms of thinking. Uh, this is an investing principle, but it's so true in every other area, in fitness and everything as well. Always thinking um, in terms of uh, long term, long term. Always thinking long term, right? A lot of people, a lot of people underestimate what they can, overestimate what they can do in the short run, but they underestimate what they can do in the long run. Uh, something that I heard from somebody I can't remember who, but it's so true, man. You know, um, keep doing one thing at a time, get better and better, and you, when you look back. After a year, two years, five years, ten years, you'll be amazed at what, at what you've actually achieved. So, never underestimate yeah, yourself in the long term. Okay. Last three questions for the audience. Sure. If I take away all your money, sure. all the assets, yep. you can keep your knowledge, mm. but all your connections are gone as well. Cool. How, can I, how will you come back? Dude, uh, I, I will 100% come back. 100% guaranteed I'll come back. And the reason why is because I know how to sell. I know how to sell. I can sell freaking... I can sell ice to Eskimos. Right? And if you have that one skill, if you master that skill of learning how to sell, uh, then you can survive anywhere in the world. And it's got to do with storytelling? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, you know, if you, if you know how to... Um, you know, find a market to actually serve, to actually sell, to serve people, then you can always definitely, most definitely survive. So I have that skill. I know how to invest my money for sure, but I also have learned and mastered the skill of speaking and selling. So that's something which uh, I will always have. And because of that, I will always have food on my table. Learn how to sell and learn how to invest. Yeah. To come back financially. Yeah. Okay. What's the first step to be rash if I am a university student or I'm, I'm working now I'm 20, in my 20s, I don't like my job, I feel lost. Mm. What's the first step to be rash? So the first step is this, don't be rash, be yourself. <laughs> right? Don't be rash, be yourself. And um, if you truly want to become financially successful and all that, remember, don't think like everybody else. If you follow everybody else, you live a life like everybody else, right? If you're in university and you think like everybody else, go and get a degree, go and find a job, dude. You just get stuck on this rat race and you know you look back in third when you're 30, 40 years old and be like, oh shit. So don't do that. But what do I do instead? I, so I, go I and, don't know what I like. So go and find Ming Tik. Go and find go and find like myself. Find people who are walking the path not walked on. Right? Hang around these people. Uh, mix around with these guys, you know. Uh, and um, hang around with a different group of people, man. And that's how you can see your life change. So that's number one. You know, and number two. Um, in terms of a job, if you really truly want to become successful financially, don't go and uh, don't go and look for a job which will give you a fixed salary, right? Go and find something. Go and find a career. Go and find a career which will give you possibly exponential income, where your income is dictated based on your performance, and not something that is a cap salary, right? Never, ever, ever, ever go for that. I know they give you security and whatever, but seriously, it's not going to help you grow. Right. After a while, that security will just be your downfall. It will be just be your handcuffs. So go for something where you get rewarded for the work that you put in. 
right? Something that is commission based, something that is truly exponential, and uh, that's exactly how you can earn exponential income and live a life that is extraordinary. Very few people choose it, which is why very few people live the life that most people can live. Uh, that few people can live. But does it matter if I like the job? Dude, if you if you if you if you love your job currently right now, give you a fixed salary, great. How about you find a job that you love, which gives you exponential income? And last question, because a lot of people, they, I, I realize there are people, because I, I'm not like this, so I did not know, but there are people who are not motivated financially, mm. maybe because they have a comfortable background, sure, sure. but they still feel lost. How, how do we find our passion of what we want to do in life? Because you are so clear of what you want to do. Absolutely. But it's so rare. Mm. So do you have any pointers of if I'm in that situation, I, I don't know, I'm lost. I just do not know what to do. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, so my, my simple theory is this, right? Especially when you are, you know, I'm assuming that Lloyd, as in more young people are watching this as well, you know, uh, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to, yeah, don't be afraid to fail. The biggest problem is in school, we are taught that if you fail, you will get retained. You, you will not be able to get a certificate. You won't, you won't be able to graduate. So people are afraid to fail. All right? So don't be, in, but in the real world, you shouldn't be afraid to fail. And when you're young, you can afford to fail. So my one advice is fail fast, fail often. Um, try as many things as, as you want and fail fast, man. Your 20s, your 30s is the time for you to your, to, to just to just go and do different things and to fail as much as you can, right? So I always have this, I love this saying, which is fail fast, but most importantly, fail forward, right? Use whatever things that you've learned to carry that with you into your next venture and whatever not, right? Because you can afford to fail. So fail fast, fail often, try these many different things and in that journey, you, you, you will eventually find something that you're truly passionate about and something you don't mind devoting the rest of your life to. But I understand is one thing, not everything is all sunshine, sunshine and rainbows. Even though Ming Tech loves what he's doing, every month he has nightmares and you know struggles as well, right? Same thing for me, even though I love what I do, not every part of what I do, I enjoy, right? I hate you know, spending you know, hours on end on aeroplanes and taxis and whatever, but it's part and parcel of the gig. Okay. And I, I just want to add one more objection that my audience may potentially have. If I try a lot of things, my resume will look very bad. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I'll, I'll be sh shifting jobs. So, if let's say this don't work and I quit, then I'll get... It's difficult for me to get the next job. This is a real obstacle that some people may have. You know, I... I, I... I serious. I kind of laughed at myself when I heard that, and the reason was because I don't have a resume. Like <laughs> me too. <laughs> High five, bro. So screw the resume. <laughs> I I've never written a resume in my life. Like I don't say this out of like you know. I just live a kind of different life, right? Like I've tried so many different things. Like right now, I can walk into any room and. If I ever need to happen to get a job again, you know, the experiences that I've had is, is more than enough. It, it, very, very interesting. So again, this is going to old school thinking. So old school thinking, you know, my mom, um, even as of this year, right? Because I don't have a, just to share with you, I don't have a degree. I've never gone to university. So I don't have, I've never graduated. I'm not a graduate. My highest qualification is A-levels. So my mom is constantly worried that, son, what if one day you need a job? Right? And then you don't have a degree. Oh shit. Who's gonna employ you? You're not gonna be employable. And you know that's how she thinks. And I cannot when she tells me that I cannot help but laugh. Like I'm laughing my ass off at that. Because I'm like, dude, see like in today's world it's no longer about having that anymore. Like if I if I ever need to have a job, like if I ever need to have a job, like Dude, if I just put a, I'm very certain if I just put a post on Facebook or whatever, like people will run after me. For sure. And that's because of me having failed fast, failed often, tried all these different things. I know so many things on so many different areas, man. So that's the reason why I have succeeded and come to where I am today. So it still applies, don't worry. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. My mother does that too. And sometimes they do it because they really care for you. They worry absolutely, for you, absolutely. You have to do your own thinking. And I think the main point that he's trying to bring forward just now is don't build your resume but build yourself. Absolutely. Because you are super confident now, you lose everything, you have the selling skill yourself, 
and you have a network which is also yourself. So build yourself as a person and just forget about resume. <laughs> yeah. right? this, this, this is what I would say, man, for sure. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about Buffett Online School and let's say if our audience want to connect to you, where can they find you? So sure, man. So uh, Buffett Online School, um, it's a school which teaches on the investing methodologies of the Buffett family. Uh, the founder of the company is Buff uh, Mary Buffett herself, who is the ex-daughter-in-law of Warren Buffett. So, um, you know, we teach the principles, we do it online, we do it offline in countries all over the world. So, you know, if you want any information on that, you can go on down to www.buffettonlineschool.com. So that's the website you can actually drop on down to. And uh, if you want to find details on me, you can follow me on Facebook. You know, my name is Rashveen. You can actually follow me on Instagram as well, Six Pack Investor. And yep, so follow me on there. Uh, you, you can follow my life and my journey and everything. So yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I think it's a very, very good interview. Thank you very and much. And our audience will surely love this interview. Absolutely. Okay. Cheers, man.